Well, weakness in global markets are prompting a lot of traders and investors to consider alternative assets from crypto to bonds to help hedge against a possible downturn. Something the ultra wealthy are considering classic cars and other luxury goods as investment grade assets. Joining us now, we've got Praz Subramanian together with Michael Kaimano. He is RM Sotheby's specialist. Uh, Praz, I know you've got a wish list going, I can imagine. Yeah, Kiko, there's a lot of cars here that are definitely on my wish list. A very special collection here on display at Sotheby's here in New York City. It's a preview for Monterey, their big auction there. Michael Kaimano is here with me now from RM Sotheby's. So Michael, tell me about this collection. What do we got here? What's going on? Sure. So here we have some of the highlights from the Oscar Davis collection, which is uh, widely known as one of the best <coughs> collections of sports racing cars. Um, you know, Oscar went out and, and collected the best of the best, and, and we have a few of those highlights here on display. Yeah, this, this Ferrari behind me, this mm -hmm. beautiful Talbo Lago yes. uh, coupe back there. So they're all going to be at, at Monterey this week, at the, uh, I'm sorry, next month for Monterey week, the big car week there. Yes. What do you expect there in terms of auctions for Monterey Pebble Beach week? So um, this year we have the, um, the potential to break uh, records there. We, we can crack the $200 million mark in revenue. Um, uh, for the first time, right? Uh, yeah, this will be uh, our largest uh, Monterey that we've had so far. Um, we've, we've, we're fortunate enough to have amassed just some of the best cars in the world. A lot of kind of once in a lifetime opportunities for collectors to acquire. So yeah, really looking forward to it. So t t I want to talk about this behind us, that, that Talbot. I didn't really expect to see that car here, yeah. the teardrop coupe. What can you tell me about that? Why is it so special? So there's only 11 of those built. Um, that's the only one that was built uh, in, in period designed to race. So it raced at Le Mans, won uh, third place, which is you know, really incredible. But if you just look at the car as far as a, a design element, uh, uh, many people consider that to be one of the most beautiful cars ever built. Um, you know, it, it was wild on the road in 1937, and it, it equally turns as many heads uh, today as it, as it did then. So a number of these cars here are kind of like five to 10 to even more, mon more uh, money in terms of the, at the hammer at auction. Sure. What are your clients telling you right now about, about collecting? Is there some kind of concern because the, the economy is sort of a, a concern, the stock market has been down recently. Are, are your clients talking to you about, hey, maybe I don't want to buy that car right now? Uh, no, uh, you know, personally, I, I haven't heard that from my clients. Uh, actually, if you look historically when, when uh, markets are down, uh, that tends to be when, money starts to flow into alternative assets, such as collector cars. Um, and as more time goes on, I think more people start to become open to that idea. And, and historically, cars have outperformed uh, basically every other asset class over time. Um, so it's also when, when we have cars like these, again, truly once in a lifetime opportunities to acquire, you're not as concerned about the market because you know in the long run these will only increase continue to increase in value, so you kind of have to take, uh, take advantage of the opportunities when you get them. So you mentioned kind of one-off pieces and, and cars that people look at as investments or alternative assets. Are your clients talking to you about them as these assets that they use to just, just for appreciation, or is, it, or is it actually an inflation hedge for, for them, mm -hmm. or is it just that they just want to have a car that they can look at and drive and, and sort of enjoy? Sure, so I, I think it really depends who you're talking to. There's definitely uh, people that fall into each of those categories that you mentioned. There, there are people that strictly collect cars for uh, a place for, for an inflation hedge and as an investment. Uh, then there's true uh, actual just car enthusiasts who want to attend Concours events and, and win awards or people who want to head to the racetrack and, and you know, go for a podium finish. So it, it really, you know, really depends, but there's a broad spectrum there. So one last question of the cars here, Michael, what, do you, what is your favorite? What is one you'd want to buy and own right now? That's really difficult in, in this room. I mean, I, you, you know. You couldn't go wrong, but I think it'd be for, for me personally that either the Talbo or the Maserati 450S. Um, the Talbo, again, being one of the the iconic designs in, in automotive history, and the 450S is basically the uh, the pinnacle of, of sports racing cars for the 50s. It's just a tremendous car, and, and these examples are the best of the best. So, of the 10 450Ss that they made, that's widely considered probably the best one out there. So. So Kiko and Brian, if I do drive that 450S Maserati down the street, I think you'll probably hear me five blocks down yeah. the road because basically the exhaust is out of the it's side of the loud, door. Huh? So you'll be able to hear me coming for a while. Hey, yeah. Pros, quickly, <laughs> can, you fit a, can you fit a set of golf clubs in the back of that thing behind you? Yeah, can we put a set of golf clubs back there? Maybe, right? Yeah, Maybe yeah, the yeah. There's a, there's a shelf in the back you can fit some in. A little there. shelf. Yeah. It all right. Work. Sounds good. We can take that to the public link since that's all, all we're good at playing at. Uh, Prasad Mini alongside Michael Caimano, <laughs> RM Sotheby's specialist. Thanks so much. Appreciate that interview.